What's going on guys? Welcome back. Happy Tuesday. I am so pleased that you're here. I hope you guys haven't been getting upset with any sort of giant corporations or any industries that have been screwing us over. Because if you have, you may want to cool off and then come back and watch this video. <laughs> Seriously. All right, so our story starts about 25 years ago in Ecuador. We have Chevron, your local gas station, gas company, in a very epic legal battle with Steven Zonzinger, a lawyer representing Ecuador, in an effort to charge Chevron with years and years of environmental damage, essentially releasing all their waste and their toxic fluids into the environment that is Ecuador, just causing a lot of havoc and turmoil for the people there and everything in the environment. This legal battle started in 1993 and it took place for around 18 years. Now, after 18 years of Chevron throwing all of its resources at these very few lawyers representing the people of Ecuador, um, <laughs> they win. They win. The, the Ecuadorian judge rules in favor of Steven Donzinger and they just win a massive lawsuit, a huge win for environmental activists everywhere, a huge win for just everyday people, and a huge loss for Chevron and everybody who is in the business of oil. Why? Well, it sets a precedent. It sets a huge precedent. Now, all of the fossil fuel companies that dump their waste either have to not dump any more waste or clean up their waste. Good, great, awesome. That was it, that was the story. Oh wait, I forgot one part. Even though the ruling was subsequently held by the Ecuadorian Supreme Court, Chevron immediately made it clear that they weren't gonna be paying the judgment. Instead, Chevron moved its assets out of the country, making it impossible for the Ecuadorians to collect. They lost fair and square, and they were gonna have to pay a settlement of 9.2 billion dollars billion dollars i mean chevron's worth around 200 billions of dollars that's still a lot of money i mean could you imagine what 9.2 billion dollars of damage looks like i can't here's a picture here's another one so what do they do that year chevron filed a racketeer influenced and corrupt organizations or rico suit against donzinger in new york city so they filed the suit and what they had done is they they requested him to hand over all the documents used on the case and also his cell phone and computer donzinger forked up a large portion of the documents a large portion of the case files but that was enough they wanted his phone they wanted his computer they wanted to prove that he was a criminal and he refused he said no the companies launched a massive retaliation campaign against me which included a, a demand that i turn over my computer and cell phone to chevron which is unheard of he appealed it and he appealed it on the grounds that it would violate his client his his client's privacy all the people that he used to win this battle against chevron chevron wanted their information and he said no well what are they going to do they're gonna use all their money. <laughs> Chevron has hired private investigators to track Donzinger, created a publication to smear him, and put together a legal team of hundreds of lawyers from 60 law firms who have successfully pursued an extraordinary campaign against him. As a result of this, Donzinger has been disbarred and his bank accounts have been frozen. He now has a lien on his apartment and has been prohibited from earning money. As of August 2020, a court has seized his passport and put him on house arrest. I appealed the order, and while it was on appeal, a, a U.S. judge locked me up, claiming I was in contempt of court, and it's now been over two years. That's fairly harsh. <laughs> That's fairly harsh. Created a publication smearing him. We're talking a, a multi-billion dollar corporation right we're talking about an extremely large entity coming after one man after one man and this one man defeated them in a very long lawsuit in which defended ecuador and its environment blaming chevron for an extreme amount of toxic waste just dumped into the environment it sounds like they're sore losers you know what it is it sounds like they're throwing a tantrum 
because their money didn't work. The home confinement is his punishment for refusing a request to hand over his cell phone and computer. The federal court judge, who has presided over the litigation between Chevron and Donzinger since 2011, Louis A. Kaplan, drafted criminal contempt charges against him. Kaplan bypassed the standard random assignment process and handpicked someone he knew. Oh wow, okay, so Kaplan, the judge, handpicked someone he knew very well, a US District Judge, Loretta Preska, to oversee the case being prosecuted by the firm he chose. It was Preska who sentenced Donzinger to home detention and ordered the seizure of his passport. It seems like Chevron has got a couple uh, officials who really do believe them and are on their side so much in fact that they went out of their way to privately investigate this man and then charge him with home confinement taking away his passport and not allowing him to earn any money. Damn, man, they really, they really just don't agree with, with whatever Donzinger did to Chevron. <laughs> All right. That case was decided solely by Kaplan, who ruled in 2014 that the Ecuadorian judgment against Chevron was invalid because it was obtained through egregious fraud and that Donzinger was guilty of racketeering, extortion, wire fraud, money laundering, obstruction of justice, and witness tampering. The decision hinged on the testimony of Ecuadorian judge named Alberto Guerra. Gura, who claimed that Donzinger had bribed him during the original trial and that the decision against Chevron had been ghostwritten. You have the judge, you have the Ecuadorian judge, Alberto, claiming that Donzinger bribed him and everything was ghostwritten. Okay, let's read more about this Alberto guy. Alberto was a controversial witness. Chevron had prepped him on more than 50 occasions before his testimony, paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars, and arranged for the judge and his family members to move to the United States with a generous monthly stipend that was 20 times the salary he received in Ecuador. In 2015, when Alberto testified in an international uh, arboration proceeding, gosh, all this legal, legal jargon, jargon, he admitted that he had lied and changed his story multiple times. According to Chevron, Alberto's inaccuracies didn't change the thrust of his testimony. Lawyers for Donzinger said that the changes in Judge Alberto's testimony completely undermined his original bribery allegations, which Donzinger has consistently denied. Jeez Louise, dude. So Chevron kind of really takes care of this judge, and the judge comes out and says, oh, now you know what, Donzinger... He bribed me. So, I mean, right off the bat, this judge, like, does not have really any moral values, it seems. If he's taking bribes from from Donzinger, and if he's also taking a bunch of money from Chevron, doesn't seem like this guy's super trustworthy. Let's see, the Intercept interviewed Charles Nesson. He is a attorney and Harvard Law School professor. This is the pinnacle element of all of the other claims against him, and if you take that one out, the rest of them, they're just not there. He's effectively been convicted of bribery by the finding of a single judge in a case in which bribery wasn't even the charge. Hmm. Hmm. Now, uh, you stop right here. You just reconsider all, all of the statements, all of the story up until now, and you kind of look at it and you go, who do I believe in this? Yeah, I might have a bias against uh, giant corporations spending an exuberant amount of money so that they won't have to spend a smaller amount of money cleaning up their own mess. Kind of don't trust Chevron here. Kind of trust the guy who spent 18 years of his life in an effort to hold Chevron accountable. Like why, why would Chevron go about smearing this man. Tell me whose motivation makes more sense here. I sort of agree with Charles Nesson here. If they don't have that judge claiming he was bribed by Don Singer, uh, the whole case kind of falls apart. They're really just trying to save their butts here. It seems as if they lost a lawsuit that they should not have lost. Like they should not have lost one because they had 
uh, infinite amount of money to throw at the lawsuit, so they should have won it. And so the fact that they didn't win it probably pisses a lot of those execs off. But also, too, if this case is lost and then is portrayed through the media, everybody knows that Donzinger has, ses- has just set a precedent for all fossil fuel companies to clean up after themselves. And so that's why you have an immediate reaction after this lawsuit was won, kind of kind of stumping any sort of uh, victory lap. Because once you have that victory lap, once you have that, that, that press conference of like, yeah, we did it, we won, heck yeah. Chevron's got to clean up what they what they what they did. As soon as you have that victory lap, it's out in the public, and so they wanted to shut that down quick. Oh wow! Okay, so this is this is Don Zinger's little leg with his little ankle bracelet on. Don Zinger's current prohibition from working, traveling, earning money, and leaving his home shows how successful Chevron's strategy has been lots of money. But even as his fate hangs in the balance, Donzinger's case matters far beyond the life of this one lawyer. Agreed. And that's why we're talking about this story today. Unfortunately, Donzinger Donzinger lost the case against Chevron, and Chevron not only won this lawsuit, also doesn't have to pay for the previous lawsuit. And I'll tell you why that's so scary. Because a corporation, private corporation, was held accountable and they didn't have to pay it. That's scary in of itself because who holds these companies accountable? Who is going to solve these companies' problems, which are now everybody in that area's problems now? Who is going to fix that if not the entity with billions of dollars not the people, not the individual people. How are you going to clean up such a mess? You couldn't unless you have Chevron's resources. The second reason I would say trumps the first, um, and that's the fact that a private business was able to, with their infinite resources, put a man, a human being with all of the human rights that we're all born with, they were able to essentially ruin his life and imprison him. That's the scary part. An individual who is trying to do some sort of good is punished for it. You do have a little lick of lights and hope, which is Donzinger scared Chevron. Donzinger scared Chevron and every other fossil fuel company that is out there and you saw that you might be wondering like what this is a very recent story why haven't i heard about this story right you might not watch the news this is something that you would see on twitter this is something you would see on facebook chevron knows if you heard about this story you'd be in don singer's favor if this case was covered at all through any sort of mainstream media there would be huge outcry everyone would be like no (laughs) <laughs> but the fact that this case got no publicity, Chevron just skirted under all that potential public outcry. You take it from your own experience. You just heard this story. How infuriated are you? And if you were to hear this, how infuriated do you think everyone else would be? So I will leave it at that. I uh, appreciate you guys coming to watch. And if you did find this story fascinating um, and you do want to share it, please share it. This story needs to come out it needs to be spread. Yeah. Chevron jailing a man. <laughs> all right. I will catch all of you guys later on. I'll catch you guys next Tuesday. Have a great day. Black Lightning precedes thunder.